What is faith? I want to open a business. How much do you have? Nothing. But faith is that I trust that God will supply my needs. That God will send helpers. So what do I do? I sit down, study about the business, come out with a budget, have a proposal, and I'm with, all I'm waiting for is for money. The proof that you have faith is you, all you'll be waiting for is God's supply or God's end of the bargain. For you, you have finished your But what do you know? Because if you know something be beyond what you are seeing and believe what you know, what you know will not become the reality. It will superimpose in what you see so that God can now use you to prove wrong a narrative. It is important to understand the foundations of our faith our Christian experience. It is important for you to, as a believer, understand the basis upon which you now live, the components of your faith in Christ. What does it mean to have faith in Christ Jesus? Because this is the foundation of our faith. So it is important that we understand that when we became born again, the Bible says that we identified with the crucifixion of Jesus. That means when Jesus died, we died with him. Not literally now, but figuratively. When you become born again by accepting all that Jesus did on the cross and accepting him as your Lord, what you have done is you have identified with his death, his burial, and his resurrection, which is the basis of our faith. That when Jesus hung on the cross and died, you died with him. You were with him when he died. And when he died on that cross, sin was once and for all dealt with. And so he was buried for three days, and on the third day he rose again. So you two were buried and then you rose again this time around to a new life not physically now or literally but in a figurative way as it has to do with our faith that when jesus resurrected we were raised with him so just like when a man resurrects he has a new life we also have a new life in christ jesus i think the scripture that best explains this is romans chapter 6 verse 4 where the Bible says that we were buried with him in baptism into death and that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So we now have a new life in Christ Jesus. That life is the Spirit of God living in us. So you, the moment you became saved, the real you had died. What is living through you now is the Spirit of God. You have been born again. You have been recreated. So Paul said in Galatians 2.20 that this new life that I have in Christ Jesus, I will live it by faith. I will live this life trusting in Him. Just the way it takes the spirit of God to resurrect a dead body in the same way I will have to depend on the Holy Spirit to come alive in me do you understand so it's like a machine that you give life to so the spirit of God is living in us and because of that we will have to depend on that life that spirit of God inside of us for everything so Paul said that the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith in the son of god so we live this life depending on the spirit of god and that's what the bible calls faith that when jesus walked on the earth even though he had the fullness of god dwelling in him the bible says he had to depend on the spirit of god that was living in him to know what was in the mind of the father to do it so jesus when he was alive living on earth he taught us how we were supposed to live when we become born again so when you study the gospels that's the reason why four books 
were dedicated to his life on earth so that we can look at it from different perspective and you know anything that stands on four legs is balanced is that true you're not following me it's important you follow so that's why you have four books dedicated to the life of jesus christ on earth so that we can see how to live as believers and paul said in galatians 2 20 that the life which i now live in the flesh it will be just the way Jesus Christ lived when he was on earth. And so the Bible calls it living by the faith in the Son of God. And so our journey in this new life and in the kingdom that we now belong to is going to be by faith. But this time around is a special kind of faith the Bible calls the faith of the Son, which was displayed by Jesus when he was alive. So everything that Jesus walked in, every kind of possibility every kind of miraculous experience jesus had every um, level of wisdom that he displayed everything that we see that manifested in the life of jesus that made him jesus the christ can manifest in our life when we understand how he was able to manifest that life he did it by faith the bible calls that faith the faith of the son of god now in Romans chapter 12 verse 3 the Bible says that when we become born again that God gives to every one of us a measure of faith this faith now that Jesus displayed it is now being given to us it is deposited in our spirits now that you are a child of God but if you are not born again you have nothing to do with this but when you become born again by accepting Jesus as your Lord and believing that he died and rose for your justification and your salvation, that faith has been imparted by God in your spirit in a measure. The Bible says God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says that all of us as believers, we have what the Bible calls 1 verse 1. That we have what the Bible calls like precious faith in other words we have the same kind of faith even though it exists in us in a measure so we are talking about faith now like a physical thing like a tangible thing that can be measured is that true the bible says god has given to each one of us at different levels and so it is important to know that your life in the kingdom will be in respect to how that faith that has been deposited in your spirit grows over time because God has given to each one of us a measure of faith but we all have the same faith but not at the same measure so everything you will experience as a child of God all the benefits of salvation the fullness of the God life you know the life that we have the life of God that is in us is precious, is excellent, is powerful, is supernatural. It is above and beyond. There are dynamics that can be manifested by this life. There are things that are seemingly impossible to the human race that are possible by this life. You understand what I'm saying? But you see, those things will only manifest in respect to how this faith in you grows so god does not expect that the measure that was kept in your spirit at salvation remains at that measure that is why in romans chapter 1 in verse 17 paul said therein well if you start from verse 16 just so that you can have a good understanding he says i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to them that believe both to the Jews and to the Greek. It says, for in it, this faith now, or sorry, in this gospel that we believe, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So when you become a believer, you will come into the knowledge of God from one level of faith to the other. So your faith will grow in respect to the knowledge of God that you become acquainted to. Or acquainted with by the spirit of god that's why it says for in it the righteousness of god is revealed from faith to faith the righteousness there simply means 
right standing or the life that is the way God wants. So you, your journey is going to be from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. If you read this, this was a quotation from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. And there's one word that is imputed here that would give us clarity of understanding. It says, but the just shall live by his faith. So when you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you became born again. You received his life on account of your believing. And now the Bible says, this life you have received, you will live it by faith. So the life will manifest on the basis of the level of faith that you have. And remember that at salvation, God deposited a measure of faith. Are you here? So, how much of God you know, how much of God you experience, how much of the authority of sonship that you experience, how much of the life of God that manifests through you, the kinds of miracles that will happen around you, the knowledge of God you will grow into will be in respect to the growth of your faith. That is why all things are possible but not on the same level. Are you following me? So the faith that we have, when we talk about faith, faith is a living thing. It is tangible. You can gauge its level. You can tell when a man has faith by the things that manifest around his or her life. And as the manifestation grows, it is a pointer that the faith of that man is growing. So faith is not a wish. It's not wishful thinking. It's not something that exists in the imagina imaginative realm. No. It is a living reality. That's why I titled the message, Living Faith. Because the just shall live by his faith. That faith that was deposited in you at salvation what it will be able to produce for you will be in respect to how you feed it, how it grows. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, faith is the substance. See, I told you that faith now becomes a tangible thing, a living thing. It's something we can interact with. It's the substance of things hoped for and the proof or the evidence of things not seen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Let's read it now, and then we'll start defining what faith is. It says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what, just for your understanding, when the Bible says the spirit of faith, it's talking about the force, the life force of faith. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. Because in the New Testament, spirit is life. So when the Bible says we have the spirit of faith, it means we have the life that came by faith. Do we understand? See, I will do it as basic as I can because the problem of the last day believer is ignorance. It says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So you see that force in us, go on, is what makes us to speak ourselves into the reality that we want to live in. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus. So you see, there's a knowing that sponsors faith. He said, we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. Why do we speak? We speak because we know that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. So our confession is on the basis of our knowledge. And it is that knowledge that sponsors the level of faith that we have part time. Let's go on. For all things are for, are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Verse 16. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though we, our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 
For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. He said, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or subject to change. That's the meaning. It means it can change form. It can change state. When the Bible says something is temporal, it can change from solid to liquid, from liquid to gas. It's a variable. He said, but for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal or long-lasting or unchanging and that is the reality that we live in so what is faith let's gather from these two scriptures and more that we will look at number one faith is your belief and conviction that creates your confidence in life faith is your belief and conviction that creates your confidence in life the reason why you are confident to go through life is because you have conviction about something. There is a knowledge you are convinced of that assures you to go through life with confidence. For instance, every one of us when we came in here, I doubt if there was anybody who checked whether the chair could carry him or her before sitting down. Is that true? If you checked whether your chair could carry you, raise your hand. Aha. Uh -huh. Why? Because we have faith that this is balanced. Based on the knowledge we have about what we, were, or what we are sitting on, we had faith that this can balance me as I sit down. So your confidence through life will always be by an assurance, a conviction that you have. So when people are not confident, it's because they lack faith in something. Every human being has in them the capacity to believe in something. Even if it is false hope that they give you. Is that true? And there are some people that can give false hope very well. Don't worry, don't worry. Even them, they are worried though. But they will tell you, don't worry, all will be well. Confidence is an attitude of positive approach. Number two, faith is a belief in the person of God. Faith is a belief in the person of God. The consistency of his ability. Faith is a resolute belief in the person of God. The consistency of his ability. And the immutability of his counsel. Resolute means total, complete. Nothing missing. Absolute belief in the person of God. Immutability means something that doesn't change or cannot be changed. So, faith is when we have complete belief in the person of God. Now, this person of God includes his nature and his character. We'll come there. When we have belief in the person of God that he exists, in the consistency of his ability. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ the same Say it again. Jesus Christ the same. That means if he is not, he's not like Nepa. You know, they have changed their names, but their spirit did not change. Is that true? The name changed, but it's the same attitude, the same. You are not sure if there will be light tomorrow, if there is light today. That's why once there is light, you run to charge your phone. Except if you have created your own power system in your house. And you know, there's, there's, that, that is related to how our journey with God is. There are some people who depend on Nepa. And Nepa alone. There are some people who have gone a step further to have, add, I pass my neighbor. Which is now a luxurious item in Nigeria now. If you have, I pass my neighbor generator. Now, for those listening from Canada, US, and all of that, I pass my neighbor generator. It's a Tiger brand generator that is small. It puffs out a lot of smoke and, re and gives the lowest current. And once it gets spoiled, you are in trouble. If you are using it, say amen. Ah. Okay. 
you will see all kinds of things in church. Amen. Where was I before we entered there? Some have gone a step further, they added a pass. But sometimes they may not have money for fuel. Sometimes it will get spoiled. Some went a step further and got a bigger generator. Then some went a step further of, of the others. They have Nepa, they have big generator, and they have solar. Is that true? So those kind of people, their confidence is top notch. There will always be power at home. So they don't walk about with power bank. Is that true? Now in the kingdom, put that point for us. When we talk about absolute belief, let's go back to that second point. He said, faith is a resolute belief in the person of God, the consistency of his ability. So there are some Christians who depend on men of God. Once there is no man of God, they are in trouble. There are some who have added to man of God little prayer groups. They are part of a prayer group here and there. Then there are some who, yes, there is a man of God. Yes, they are part of a fellowship or a group or a church that prays, but they know God for themselves. Is that true? So faith is a resolute belief in the person of God, the consistency of his ability, and the immutability of his counsel. When your faith is anchored on this, it's solid as a rock. You know that God cannot change. You know that his power and his word is consistent. If he said it and did it yesterday, if he's saying it today again, he will do it. Those are the kind of believers that all they need is a word from God and that is all. Like the boy who gave the testimony about after whispering the first prayer, the consciousness, the revelation that came and that was it. And you know, it was funny that he didn't even add that he, he started speaking in tongues again. Because many times, many of us, those, those tongues you, you speak in the face of trouble is just out of fear. That's why after speaking in tongues, you still landed into the trouble. But your deliverance is today. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 to 18. It says, thus God, I'm still on the second point, what faith is. He said, thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel. God wanted Abraham to believe him beyond any reasonable doubt. He wanted Abraham to know that what he has said and what he has proposed cannot change. The Bible says, in the bid to show that his word and his purpose doesn't change so that Abraham can have absolute belief in him, the Bible says God confirmed it by an oath. Go on. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Are you seeing that? It is impossible for God to... But you know people believe drugs more than God. People believe their uncles, their aunties more than God. That we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Those two immutable things are his promise and his oath. When he promised Abraham that I will make you a father of many nations, that was his word spoken to Abraham, which doesn't change. The second thing that is immutable and doesn't change is his oath that God swore. And the Bible says somewhere, I think in Romans, that when God could swear, at, or Hebrews here, that when God could swear by no one, he swore by himself. The reason why God swore by himself is because for you to swear, you need a higher deity to swear. You will need to depend on the consistency of the ability of the deity. For instance, if they, they say, who stole this meat? And they are interrogating someone and the person say, I swear. No, baby, take him. If I take him tomorrow, may Sean go. Now, he's swearing by that deity because he believes that the deity is spirit. And as such, is not uh, conformed to the limitations that he has as a human being so that if by tomorrow it is discovered that he's the one shongo 
But the Bible says that God did not swear when God was looking for who to swear so that Abraham would believe him that what he had told Abraham will come to pass. God could swear by no one but himself. Why? Because he doesn't change. In a thousand years, what he said still stands. That's why he swore by himself. Let me tell you as believers, the blessing of God on your life is in the category of what I call the sworn blessings. It's this lack of knowledge that that's why many believers are jittery. You know why I call it the sworn blessing? Because we are the seed of Abraham. And what he gave to Abraham was a sworn blessing. That's why in Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, as it is written, cause is everyone that hang on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be given to the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So it was a sworn blessing that God gave to Abraham that through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. The only way to explain that, the, that reality is salvation. How can through one man the whole earth is blessed? If not that a savior of the whole earth will come through that man. Do you understand it? So if God tells you that I will bless you, go and sleep. Doesn't matter how long. Five years, ten years, twenty years. The waiting is not the problem. That you are waiting. You see, it's not like fair queue in Nigeria. That if you wait too much, it will finish. In a thousand years, what God said to you will still manifest. And you have to believe that God is able to, if it, if it means keeping you for one thousand years, that you don't die, so that his promise will be fulfilled, he's able to do it. God swore to Simeon in Luke chapter 2 that he will not die until he sees the Lord. Only God knows how old Simeon was. Maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred plus. And so all the symptoms of old age, rheumatism, arthritis, diabetes, all the teeth and teeth didn't catch him. Why? Because God swore to him that you will not die. Or probably you are here as a woman and God promised you in a dream 15 years ago, you are a young lady, that you are going to give birth to a prophet that God will use to liberate nations. And now you are 35, you are 40, you are not married. Let me tell you the truth. Your clock is not ticking at all. God created time. There's nothing like time before God. That's why when we talk to God and we speak from the basis of time, there is no compatibility because before God, yesterday is as today. The Bible says a thousand years is like one day before God. It doesn't matter even if you get to 55 and that's when you get married. If God told you that you will give birth to a son that will be a prophet to nations, he is able to bring it to pass. You will not be the first experiment. He has done it with Sarah. He has done it with Anna. He has done it with Elizabeth. And you know, it gets better. The first experiment may not be too good, but as you continue with the rest, as you keep producing, it gets better. So, to somebody who came here thinking that God is playing games with them, no. It's about to fulfill what concerns you. Say loud, amen. amen. I said it's about to fulfill what concerns your destiny. Amen. Number three. Faith is a lifestyle that is built based on one's convictions about God and his word. Faith is a lifestyle that is built based on one's convictions about God and his word. When we say about God, we mean his nature and his character. You know, the nature of God is, is one thing. The character of God is another. What teaching was that last year when I talked about uh, the nature of God, the character of God, the will of God. Huh? Knowing God, it, who said that? I'll give you something. Clap for her. Do you have a dollar account? Eh? 
Not yet. Okay, so I won't give you in dollars. I'll give you in Naira. Clap for her. That's, that's somebody. Clap, my friend. When you come to church, don't just listen once and go. Go back and listen again and again. You see, it's your knowledge of God that determines what you become. Some of us can watch a film again and again and again to a point where you can literally write the script of that film. But the script of your life, which is in the word of God, you don't know. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. Let me not enter that mode today. So faith is a lifestyle. Because you are convinced about God and his word, there is a life you begin to live. So you see that the end of faith is always an action. There is always an action that is taken. There is always something physical, a walk that is manifested. A proof that someone has faith is that your convictions will begin to produce a lifestyle. Just the way you came and sat on the seat, knowing that the seat could carry you. You were convinced that the seat could carry you. That's why you are seated. If you are not convinced, or maybe the seat moves a little bit, you will stand up and look for another seat, isn't it? So your actions now is based on the convictions you have about that seat. That's why we say faith is a lifestyle. So when you look at yourself from Monday to Saturday, how you live will tell whether you are fully convinced about God and his word. How many times did you have the opportunity to engage faith or take actions by faith? Not having any physical assurance, but you took a step knowing that God will go ahead of you to perfect it. How many times in a week do you have that? If you have it just once, it means that you are not fully convinced about the nature, the character of God and his word. God's word is like him. The Bible says your word is yea and amen is his name. The word of God and God cannot be separated. They are the same. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void until it accomplish that which I have sent it and prosper in the thing that I pleased. So even if that word comes from a man of God or it comes through a dream or it comes through a vision, so long as you are able to discern by your spirit that this is God's word, there is a lifestyle that we expect to see from you in accordance or in obedience to that word that has produced a conviction. So when a couple is trusting God for a child and they are fully convinced that it is written in Deuteronomy 7 verse 14 that you shall be blessed above all nations and none among you shall be barren. That they are fully convinced that it is written in Genesis 1 28 be fruitful and multiply. What do you think they should be doing? Buying baby things. And even to show that they have faith, they will go and buy the exact the sex. What's wrong? Am I speaking Greek? That is how faith is. What is faith? I want to open a business. How much do you have? Nothing. But faith is that I trust that God will supply my needs. That God will send helpers. So what do I do? I sit down, study about the business, come out with a budget, have a proposal, and I'm all I'm waiting for is for money. And you meet somebody and say, what do you want to do? And the person says, I want to start a business. What kind of business? Saloon business. How much will it cost you? And don't invest in that person. They have shown you lack of faith. If they had faith, they would have done their market survey. They would have sat down to study the business, write down a concrete proposal, write a budget. The proof that you have faith is you, all you'll be waiting for is God's supply or God's end of the bargain. For you, you have finished your own. So you now see that most of what we call faith is not faith. The proof that we have faith that God is able to do miracles is that we have a miracle service. And before the miracles start, I come here and start speaking as if I'm owning the whole world. Sometimes in a service like this, as ordinary as you think the atmosphere is, because you think the atmosphere is ordinary like this. I'm talking to you and I say miracles will happen. And then in less than 30 minutes, all of a sudden the hall changes. 
and then you begin to hear testimonies from far is a proof that I have faith so there is a lifestyle that will follow your confession your confession of faith number what now let's end number four faith is believing what you know more than what you see until what you believe becomes what you see faith is what believing what you know more than what you see until what you believe becomes what you see so let me give you an example you have fever what do you see that you are shaking and you are running temperature isn't it but what do you know let the weak say I am strong not the strong say I am strong so you have to believe what you know more than what you are seeing until what you believe which is what you know now becomes what you see so invariably faith is the component that helps you to transport your desired reality from the realm of the spirit into the physical when god sends you to a city as a businessman or as a pastor what do you see on serious people a dry land they don't make money here except you are in lagos or abuja or london or south africa or pretoria or uh, uh, Johannesburg or, now God sends you to where? Dutsi, Jigawa that's what you see but what do you know? because if you know something be beyond what you are seeing and believe what you know what you know will now become the reality it will superimpose in what you see so that God can now use you to prove wrong a narrative. Just like what he did to them in the wilderness. You don't get water in the wilderness. You don't even get food. But the Bible says he fed them for 40 years. And they drank water from where? From rock. At least dig the ground for water to come out. God brought water from a rock. He says, so, he said, I took you through all this so that you will know that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word. So if I take you out of your six-bedroom duplex, take you out of your two cars, tell you to, you to, to sow your two cars as a seed, and send you to a state where you came only with your bag, as long as I am with you, everything you enjoyed in that place will be replicated there. Just like, you know, now in Meduguri, the temperature is very hot. I know people that are listening from South America now, they are experiencing rain. From Europe, there's snow, they are cold everywhere. But here in Meduguri, he hot. But it's not everybody that is feeling the heat. There are some people that don't know that it's hot. They only know that it's hot when they come out. Why? Because they have an air-conditioned house. They move with an air-conditioned car. They have an air-conditioned office. So we are all under the same climate, but our experiences are different. Faith is believing what you know more than what you see till what you see becomes what you believe. For instance, I don't believe that there is any greener pasture anywhere. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside and he maketh me lie down in green pastures. So for me, green pastures is where his will takes me to. Is that true? I believe that you can prosper anywhere. I believe you can succeed anywhere. I believe from anywhere the world can hear you. Location does not matter. Family background does not matter. Status does not matter. All of those things are natural, physical things that can change. And what brings the change? the weight of your conviction so I think these two definitions or the four definitions helps us to fully grasp and understand what faith is 